pour a glass of craft beer, we can do this. Yeah. What's good, y'all? This is C Certified Brewhead, and welcome to another edition of BML here on BAOS. As always, we got a five BML, ladies and gentlemen. Um, give you shout out to the guys at Market Brewing in Newmarket, Ontario, a little bit north of Toronto. Um, heard fantastic things about these guys. Uh, we were blessed with a uh, bomb BML. Uh, so huge shouts to y'all. We have six bangers. Um, we have a lager, a uh, fest beer, like an Oktoberfest thing, a brown, raspberry brown ale, which sounds amazing. Um, the double dry hop Vermont Paler, which I know the fellas are pretty excited about. They're big Vermont fans, so on the same level. Uh, Juice Delicious, a hoppy tart ale, I guess. And a Bear Hug IPA, which is their uh, LCBO banger. So, let's start with the lager. Um, so, I haven't actually been up to Market Dish yet. Uh, what I know most about him, Scotty went up when was it? sometime over the summer. And he had a, um, he entered like a contest where you had to hold a stein full of beer out. Oh, it was actually one hand, sorry. And it was a bunch of people and it was whoever could hold it the most. Now, Scott, uh, I'm sure anyone who knows him well... They know Scotty is a competitive young man, and uh, he would never, you know, take an L on that one. So he won the contest, um, and he was telling me about the beers and that they were fantastic. And uh, so I was very happy when we uh, connected with them. So this first beer is the Beswick Lager, five percent. Um, Let's say the hops. Oh yeah, Magnum, Halital, and Belma. Very very cool. All right, so Lager is looking nice and sexy. Uh, perfect. I'm just very much in the mood for a lager right this very moment as well. I love to try the lighter styles of breweries uh, up front. I've been doing that more and more lately, particularly as I've been getting more and more into the crisp boy side of things. Uh, so I'm excited. Get it in ya. Smells great. Yeah. Nice, man. Balanced. Uh, bready. A little bit sweet. Uh, but like light bitterness, um, even though this is my, I say this in almost every video, this is my first beer of the evening, so uh, sometimes it hits you a little bit weird, particularly with the lighter styles, they always get thrown off by the palate uh, from the first beer, but mm -mm -mm. yeah, man, great lager, um, yeah, everything it needs to be, it's uh, completely uh, crushable, crisp, and really well made. Um, I don't know, I have. I was gonna say high expectations. I just have really positive expectations for this brewery just because I've heard great things from multiple people about it. So I'm not surprised at all that this is dope. Plus, as well, the fact that they were like they hit us up because they did the um, the hazy double dry hop pale ale, and that is clearly our shit right there. Um, so I figure anybody who's sort of down with that tends to be more in line with uh, the other beers because there's like that attention to detail to really nail those flavor profiles. So this is great. Mm -mm -mm. All right, lager, fantastic. Next up, Festbier. I don't know how to say that. Maskrug, maybe. I'm sure it means something specific. Uh, it is technically fall, even though the weather isn't really very fall like. Um, so it's perfect time for this. So I don't have a huge grasp, TBH, on exactly the differences between all of these um, sort of Oktoberfest. German joints. Um, I have heard recently what a Marzen is, like they were prepared in Mar uh, March, hence Mars, Marzen, and uh, sell it over the summer to release. So I don't know what the difference between a Fest beer and a Marzen and then uh, whatever people just call an Oktoberfest beer, which is probably this. Um, what is this? This is 6.2%, so it's a bit more of a banger. Look at this side by side. I kind of expected it to be darker, but it's kind of like a honey color. Not a huge, I might have, probably should have taken them out of the fridge longer, but been out like five minutes, ten minutes. Not a huge nose, but I put that down to being cold, so get it in now. Nice. It's kind of like really similar to the lager. It's like a maltier, more caramel y lager, I guess. Um, can't taste the booze, particularly these lighter styles. Once it hits like above six, I'm like, that's a bit of a worry sometimes, but this is well balanced. Maybe things will change um, as it warms. But this is great. It's got that, yeah, caramel breadiness, uh, chill bitterness, a little bit of uh, sweetness in there as well. It's kind of like 
ballsy. It's like it's filling. I like this. Um, yeah, maybe the booze will come through as it warms up, and then I guess I'll see how I feel about it after. But that's the only problem. With these uh, real quick reviews can't can't give you the full picture. Is what it is, people. So, yeah, this is fire. I like this. Both really well made. I feel like if a brewery, and I guess everyone is pretty well known and pretty well agreed upon that if a brewery can nail these type of styles where they lag it and that they have nothing to hide behind, there's no crazy amount of hops or uh, adjuncts, then that's a very good sign. So I'm very excited for these next ones. So let me go get changed. All right, y'all, next up. Bam, raspberry brown ale, new life, 4.4%, fresh from the market. I like that uh, slope. That's pretty dope. Raspberry brown ale. Oof, it's a really interesting idea. I think I've talked about this a few times. I've hardly had any brown ales. No, not hardly had any, I guess, but brown ales are kind of underwhelming. They're, to me, they strike me as boring. But recently, I had a bunch of um, really, really good brown ales from a bunch of different breweries. So I know that brown ales can be super, super fire. So this one with raspberry, like, mate, that sounds so good. Um, Definitely just smells like a brown ale. Pretty opaque there. Can't really smell any raspberry. All right, get in ya. Interesting. I feel it. Mm, quicker. Hmm. First beer of the evening. Uh, as always, I feel like it's hit the palate weird. I can taste the raspberry a bit. It tastes like kind of thin. Like it's something missing from this one. I'm not sure what that would be. No, I'm getting the raspberry's like a tang in the back. I can definitely get that. It's a little bitter, but I feel like I, I want to give this a few more sips just to warm me up a bit. Mm. Okay, making a bit more sense now. Yeah, it's a little tangy. So I think it's got the fruit. The fruit in it has made it feel a little. Um, a little thinner. Also, it's 4.4%. Normally, I'd say brown ales. I don't, I don't recall really drinking any that are south of 5%. So perhaps there's been a little less grain or some part of the process that um, has made this a little kind of thinner. Because it definitely tastes a little thinner. But I guess that's the point. There seems to be like a session brown ale. All right, it's growing on me. That happens a lot. Keep that in mind, guys. Like sometimes I've had beers um, that I've even written a review of or I've done it on camera here. And I thought mm, it was pretty good. It's fine, nothing crazy, and then I've enjoyed it so much more later. And that happened again recently. <clears throat> so I feel like you really gotta give, just like anything else in life, sometimes a book or a movie or music, I always try and like force myself through it just to, you know, like essentially this is, this is art in a glass. So that's a good episode name actually. Um, and it's it's something that like you need to sort of, you know, you can't just have two sips and be like, ugh, trash. Like, people do that, I see that often, and it always kind of bothers me because I make music as well, and I would really hope that people would watch my full video or listen to the full song or a full album before judging. I listen to everything that comes out that I'm interested in, in my, like, genre, and I do it because I need to know what the kids are listening to and what's hot these days, but also, like, I, I, I listen to the whole thing. I think it's just really important to give the art a chance. Now, if it's really trash and you're just not feeling it, then cool, but, like, I really feel like you have to give something a bit more of a chance because um, you never know. Some of my favorite albums over the years have been something that I didn't enjoy at all at first, and then afterwards I'm like, man, this is crazy. Um, so, you know, a bit, a bit of advice there for the kids. Mm. Yeah, still quite thin for my taste. Like, I would prefer it to be ballsier, but um, I like it now. It's good. Nice, bitter, chocolatey. It's kind of like a, a light brownie dessert type of thing. All right, next up. Juicy Licious 2.0. It's a hoppy tart. I guess you may, it just says hoppy tart. 5.2%. So maybe it's a sour? Don't know. Okay, it kind of smells like a dry hop sour. Uh, love it if that's the case. I feel like that's something that uh, we need year round. It's pretty clear, which would indicate a, uh, a sour. Just because I know these guys are Haze fans, so if they were going to make an IPA, potentially it would have some sort of opacity. Yes. Get every drop. Yeah. Totally smells like a, a sour. So 2.0, so I'm not sure if this is just a second batch or some sort of change of recipe. Mark it, guys, there. If you can let us know in the comments, that would be dope. Put it in you. 
Yeah, dry hop sour. It's great. Nice. Um, was it five two? So it's kind of light, crushable. Um, this smells like nice fruity tropical nose with a little bit of tartness in there. Mmm. Mmm. You can really taste the hops now. This is pretty fresh. I only received this, I don't know, four or five days ago. I can really taste the tropical hops in this. This is really good. Mmm. Balanced sourness, kind of more tart and tangy, as opposed to like puckering sour. Um, smooth. Oh man, I really like this. We'll have to know what hops you guys are using this. This is great. Maybe Untapped will tell me later when I check in, but fire. I haven't had a good dry hop sour for a while. Don't know why. Maybe it's just not that kind of party. Now I'm getting cocky right now. Uh, I feel like I can do four in one evening. Solo dolo is how we do. All right. Excuse me. So this was the main uh, reason that I got, uh, that uh, Mark and I got in touch. Um, this is a, it's called Sacrifice Everything Double Dry Hop Vermont Pale Ale, 5.6%. So I know the guys there are big fans of foam. Uh, out there in Burlington, Vermont. One of the goats of the US. All right. And uh, I think this was sort of uh, inspired by foam. Um, and this was the beer that uh, prompted them to reach out. So I was very happy to hear that. I love hearing that... Um, Folks north of the border, yes, look at that. It's pretty opaque right there. It's not like murky, but it's opaque AF. Get all of it in there. Yeah, it makes me happy when um, Canadians, you know, get moving on this style at first. I was like jumping for anything that anyone would make, but now it seems to be a lot more common, which makes me very happy. Not so much here in Quebec. It's definitely a lot more going on in Ontario as far as the haze, but they'll get there. All right, 5.6%. Vermont style pale ale, get it in ya. Nice. This is yeasty bite, heavy yeast bite, super chalky, tropical fruits, um, sort of creamy, not crazily so. Mm. Mm. Smooth though. It's got like that, there's a nice little. I think the bitterness is coming from the yeasty bite, so maybe it's not really like pure bitterness, but like the bite is pretty pronounced. Um, interesting kind of head, it wasn't like super thin, like larger bubbles, faded away pretty quickly. Um, yeah, I like the chalkiness though. Yeah, I'm not sure if this one is the type of beer, sometimes these kind of beers just need to settle for like a week or two. Um, to let that yeasty bite go down, or sometimes it's intentional, I'm not sure what the deal is with this one, but um, yeah, this is crushable. I feel like potentially after these two, I just came from a dry hop sour, so going to this potentially is gonna taste a little more bitter than it actually is. Um, yeah, really great tropical fruit profile though. Um, I think they did pretty well with this one. I'm not sure if this is the first one they ever made of the style, but uh, I enjoy that, that's fantastic. Um, Last one. Now, this is the only beer uh, from market that I have here that's available in the LCBO. I heard a lot about this one. It's called Bear Hug IPA, 7%. Um, I heard fantastic things. I can't remember if it's hazy. Guess we'll find out. Yeah. So I like the difference in the thing. As you can see, these ones just have a little label on the front on the silver bullets there, whereas this one has the full can wrap, which I quite like. Let's see. Okay, it's significantly darker than the other one. Oh, it's hazing up. Nice, mate. Yes. Get that in your face. Love that head, looks great. I like it. I also like that, interesting. Now that color, oh, that's not good at all. I feel like that's oxidized. That happens. Does that look, unless it's right, that sometimes to me, and this happened recently, like sometimes beers are just a weird color. Um, usually just they're brighter and a can isn't giving me huge aromatics. But we shall find out. Hmm. Alright. So, what did I say it was? 7%? So hopefully it's not. Uh oh, shit. I had a few beers recently. From a few places that unfortunately were oxidized. It happens part of the process. Um, sometimes it just gets in there. It is what it is. So let's give it a try. Get in you. Shit, I don't know. I wonder if it is. I don't want to like. I don't want to speak out of place if it isn't. Speak out of turn. Am I right? Speak out of turn. Speak out of turn. <laughs> <laughs> you like that? You like that? Yeah, that's Still good. Did that? Um, I don't know if this is oxidized. Could you tell? What do you think? 
Does if you can look, weird? do you want to try it? it weird? It's not weird, weird. Mm. It's definitely more of that like kind of treehouse vibe, like kind of a little bit like. I just feel like based on the rest of the beers, I don't know if that's. Yeah, I wouldn't say so. Wouldn't say so. It's pretty boozy. Yeah, seven percent. Seven. seven. Just the colors throwing me off. Okay, well if I'm wrong, apologies, guys. Um, it, this is definitely kind of like I said, like dank treehouse kind of vibe. Yeah, maybe just tripping. It's just the color that completely threw me off, and now I'm drinking it as if is this oxidized? So let's just say that it's not, because I don't know for sure, and I'll mention it, and I'll see if the guys uh, can point it out. I'm sure they'll know immediately. I just haven't seen a picture. I'll check on Untap. Sometimes people put the photo check in so I can see if the color is about right. It just looks like I had one from a from a brewery in Ontario a few months ago, and it looked like looked like that looked like. Unfortunately, so yeah, it's got that dankness to it. Super smooth. Um, wicked, like that um, pillowy foamy head. Mm. Yeah, kind of like a little bit fruity. Not really much bitterness, pretty smooth. Yeah, I like it. So, uh, these are the six beers from Market Brewing in Newmarket, Ontario. Very impressed. Like I said, I had, uh, I came into this with high expectations or positive and great expectations. Um, I'd heard very, very good things from Scott and from a few other friends. Um, make sure it's recording. So if you get a chance to get down there, please do so. Um, if you see Bear Hug in the IP, oh, in the IPA, wow, in the LCBO, pick that bad boy up if you get a chance. Yeah, brew pub, I'd like to try what else uh, they offer. I'm sure they have a whole bunch of brew pub only stuff, which is uh, way more fun for me. I love that. But this is great that they're canning products so you can take them to go. There's nothing better. It's one thing I don't like about Quebec is that I can't go to Judas Yell and then leave with a bunch of bottles. Like you have to go to a separate depth and it's just a, such a ridiculous law. So I love that about Ontario that you can go somewhere and pick up the beer as you walk out the door. It's beautiful. So guys, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the episode, mate, boom, smash the thumbs up. Hit subscribe below. Hit the notification bell. Tiff. Oh, ding. <laughs> so you know when the new new drops. Follow us on social media at BOS Podcast. Check out the low form audio. Follow us on Spotify, um, Apple Podcast, review rate, subscribe. Always some fire stuff coming up. That is it, y'all. We'll see you in the next episode. And as always, get in ya.